What's up guys, Axis here and today I'm going to be doing another modeling tutorial in Cinema 4D. So again, uh, I am not the best modeler so you know if there's any uh, things that I'm doing wrong or that I could be saving a lot of time by doing then just post them in the comments and you know help some people out with this. So um, yeah, what I'm just going to be doing is I'm just going to be using the spline tool and I'm just going to try and create kind of like, um, I don't know, just try and create some weird things and I'll just show you the basics of kind of using the uh, spline tool to create stuff like this. Uh, so I don't really know where this is going, I don't really have a plan for it but I just thought it'd be quite a good tutorial to cover. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the top view and then I'm just going to, you know, do it with some random patterns. So we're, I'm going to start in the centre and then I can like, you can work your way out from here. So just do a really simple uh, path. Remember to you know just keep using the uh, the grid for reference. If you zoom in, you'll be able to see that all these other grids will actually appear. I'm just going to use the outer ones. So there, too long. That was a bit dodgy, but oh well. Uh, and then I'm just going to go out to the center again. And then what we can do now is we can click on the spline, go to object and close spline. Uh, that's a bit messed up. Two seconds, I'm going to try and align that a bit better. So you can just control Z to undo anything that you're not happy with. So there we go. Close spline, hopefully it's going to be a straighter. No, okay, never mind. Uh, just go into the front view again, perspective view. And then what we're going to want to do is uh, I'm going to duplicate this. Control C, Control V, and then we're gonna just click up here, and then we're gonna go and rotate this. This is looking bad. Right. Uh, now you might want to move these a bit closer, but I'm just gonna connect them. So you select both of them, and then then do uh, connect objects and delete, which will conjoin them as one spline, and then you can put it into a extrude. And as you can see, the problem here with not aligning it properly is that there's going to be a big gap in the middle. Uh, so, you know, I'll try and fix that somehow. There we go, that's close enough. Close enough. Extrude nerves, and then you have it here. It's extruding uh, in the Z, which is not correct. So you want to do the Y in this case. But if you're using, using the front, then the Y should be all right. But if I tried to extrude it on the uh, uh, Z, this is what would happen. It's just going to do some weird stuff. So yeah. Uh, so one thing we can do with this is obviously put it into our good friend, the cloner. Uh, basically, if you don't have any ideas, use this. Cloner is a good tool and it will also increase your render times so watch out for that so I'm just using transform tools you'll get the hang of it once you just mess about with it for a while uh, and as you can see if I pull out uh, if I go to the radius and go like into the negatives then we're going to be able to pull this out and then as you can see, if I go into transform and just mess about with this, we can get some cool effects out of this. Uh, and then you can even put an outline around this if you wanted, but I'll just do that after I've done some other stuff with this. So put this into a cloner again. I'm going to go to grid array, one, one for the uh, X and Y, X and Z I mean. And then we're going to increase the Z, in fact no we're not. We're gonna do the we're gonna do the Z, I think. Yeah, there we go, that's it. So you're gonna see that this will look good, okay? Trust me. <coughs> so as you can see I put this on 14 and I've put the distance, so you can just mess about with the distance until you get something you like. You can just mess about with the size and the copies uh, until you get something that you like. So oh, rain. Right, uh, and then on the cloner what you can do is you can go to the, uh, make sure this is selected, 
uh, and then go to effector and we're going to go to step just like that tutorial that I did on the Marauder and as you can see this is actually quite a cool effect already but when you uh, when you adjust the uh, radius on the uh, the child of that cloner there we'll just call this uh, radial and then we'll call this one uh, grid sorry about if you hear a hoover in the background got some good hoover effects here and then we can uh, um, reduce the radius as you can see nothing has worked so we can just pull this in just do this step by step you can even use a scroll wheel if you want to feel fancy or oh, you can lock up there we go right there we go and that's a nice effect this looks really nice because uh, once you get some lights in here you're gonna see a lot of shadows going down these steps yeah. so if we go into the radio again we can animate this to open up like that and start out in this position I might even try and do some renders because I know I don't often do renders so I'm gonna I'm gonna go from a closed position position to uh, an exposed open position so you can kind of fly through this it'll be quite cool uh, so let's just do it over three seconds to keep it short Ooh. well that's actually quite cool and now I'm just gonna go to the negatives and then pull this out you can do it like this or you can pull uh, the thing all the way out so you see all the individual bits but I'm just going to try and do something like this as you can see we've got quite a nice effect and then we can even mess about with the transform and you know stuff like that you can animate the transform as well oh that would look nice so I'm just going to use the uh, Z on the um, rotation transform options no that's not gonna look good it did look good in the close position but I'm not gonna mess about with it I'm gonna just try and rotate this slightly so what we can do is we can do like a uh, I think it will be on the Z actually so if you go to Z and then you just go over uh, keyframe that go to the end by the way if you don't know how to keyframe uh, it's control and click or you can do F9 either or works so what, what the idea for this is, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a camera and then I'm going to rotate this, uh, rotate the camera just flying into it but flying the opposite direction so it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like clashing with the other rotation too and it looks quite cool actually, it looks really trippy I guess. Right, so I'm just going to put the rotation on these two on zero, so basically we'll put everything on zero and then we're going to put the y on minus uh, negative 91 and then if I zoom out on the y this will this will depend if you did this in the top view or the front view but if you did it exactly how I did it these should be the kind of dimensions that you're going to want um, so I'm going to start here at the start we're going to do F9 keyframe the whole of the camera yeah, we're in the camera. Make sure you're in the camera view, so click this. You'll be able to see if you zoom out here that this is not the active camera, and you can actually see the camera here. You'll be able to see it moving and stuff, which is quite good for reference. Um, and then we're just going to go all the way to three seconds, and we're going to go and fly through this. Like, whoa, there we go, flying through it. I did notice that this cloner is slightly off, but, you know, oh well. Right, so now what you're going to want to do is going to uh, look at this and see what the rotation is. If it's in the negatives, you're going to want to start at a positive. Wait, well, you're going to want to start at zero and then go to a positive, and then you'll get the opposite motion. So if we go to here, we can see this already at zero, so we can go to here and 180. Yep. This might uh, cause some problems because if you create like text or something, it's going to appear upside down. So you could do the motion in reverse. But as you can see, we're flying through this as it opens, which is quite nice. 
And then you can have a bunch of them if you want to create some kind of abstract effect. Uh, and then I'll also do the, um, what do you call it? The outline with the uh, fillet. So go to caps, fillet, fillet. And I'm going to go one and one. I'm going to create material. And I'm going to create this as a blue material. Luminant slightly, maybe a glow. Sorry if I'm going a bit fast, but you know, you should be able to keep up if you just go and pause bits of it. In fact, uh, I've Frenzel and turn down the mix. That should be alright for the glow. Just put this on here, and as you can see, the outline is now being created. If you wanted to create kind of like a, a nicer effect here, what you can do is you can go into caps and fill it again. But this time we'll put it at 0.5 so it doesn't overlap the uh, the outline that we've done. So you will get kind of like a, a smooth transition into this object. And then now we can just go and create... Uh, I'm going to just do a reflective object. To, where are you? Where are you? There we go. I'm going to go 7 on the blur. Bearing in mind you won't have these option if, options if you're in physical render, I'm pretty sure. Oh wait, you will, but you won't have the you won't have the sample rates and the uh, stuff like that. But everything else should be available for you. Right, that's looking alright. I might want to turn up a bit more. Depending. Looks quite nice. So I'm just going to stick this on the other one. And then I'm going to get, uh, just do a preview render here. And see if I can get it looking quite nice. Oh, that's quite cool. You could have a light flying through it and then highlighting each individual part. Just giving these ideas out for free. Make sure you have shadows ticked. Otherwise, you're not going to see any of the shadows, and you will also won't any see any of the shadows if you don't have ambient occlusion on, which is vital. So let's see. I'm getting some more shadows. It's taken a, a while to render, comparatively. Physical render. Let's see if that makes a difference. Nope. Oh well. And then what you want to do is you also want to get a sky in here. Sky. Sky. Um, and then you have to create an HDRI object thing. So I don't know if you can use HDRs because you can use them in Octane uh, skies, but you can't use them in, I don't know. Oh, let's try one out. I've just got a pack here. I'm uh, pretty sure it's free. I'm not sure where I got it. If I find it, I'll put a link for it. If I don't, oh well. Oh, they do work. Okay, that's that's quite neat. Turn off specular. Drag this onto your sky. Right click, Cinema 4D tags, compositing, and uncheck scene by camera so you won't see the uh, the uh, sky in the background. So you just see a black image but the reflections are still going to exist so obviously this would need some tweaking and some more lights but you do have reflections in there I'm just going to mess about with this a bit oh wait I won't get that will I um, why you no work? As I realize that that is actually just getting rid of the reflections. Uh, specular, try specular. Metal. Kind of worked. Okay. 
get a reflection of the blue as well onto the object, which is quite nice. Alright. So obviously you can do a lot of things with this kind of effect. And then you could have your logo down here. You could be flying through a bunch of logos of sponsors and whatnot. Obviously with nicer materials and lights, but you know, it's a start. HDRI is looking quite nice. So, you know, you can just change up the whatever's in here. I actually don't know if I'm using the HDR correctly, but... Because I've not used it for so long in Cinema 4D stock. Maybe if I kind of just went into reflection and reduce the... Okay. Yep. Right, so as you can kind of see, what we've got now is we've actually got some reflections in there, but I'm still not, I think that some blur would actually do this quite well because there are some anti-aliasing issues which we can't fix because we're in physical. So, you know, adding blur will just kind of blur out the imperfections in it. Oh shit, I done fucked up. Uh, where? So as you can see, you can do a lot of things with this. Camera angles also will also affect the lighting. So, you know, something like this might look quite nice. It's going a lot slower because it's going to have to render all these um, shadows in here. But, you know, if you want a good shot. Oh yeah, that's quite nice because you can see the reflections there in the blue as well as the uh, metal. <coughs> Which is really nice. You might, might also want to add some textures here. So, you know, like some metal textures or whatever. But yeah, that's actually quite a nice effect. If you get the right camera angle in Cinema 4D, you can really get something that looks nice. The blue colour might be a bit weird though, but you know. You can tweak that and do whatever you want with this kind of an effect. You can just pen tool and use the cloner. There's endless opportunities really for the cloner, so. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty much it, I guess. Um, so, if you like this tutorial, if I should do more stuff with, you know, like splines, modeling, or whatever, even though I'm pretty bad at modeling. Um, you know, just comment, uh, suggest other tutorials that I could do, obviously, because I'm going to need some more. Because, um, you know, I don't want to just keep doing intro tutorial after intro tutorial and stuff like that, because really the, the process I do for them is mostly the same. Um, apart from in Cinema 4D, obviously. Um, but, you know, if you're doing 2D stuff in uh, After Effects, then the workflow is a lot different every time. But for Cinema 4D, uh, it's always different for me because I'm normally just doing 3D stuff instead of doing stuff in After Effects, which is really just uh, touching up in my case. Uh, you know, touching up what it looks like, darkening some of the bits, adding, like, depth of field when you... Well, if you can't add it in Cinema 4D, then add it in After Effects, but, you know. So yeah, just comment below what, uh, you know, have you done anything cool with this? Obviously send it my way uh, and I'll check it out. Um, yeah, so I'll see you guys next time. He's a wee wave for the camera. He's a wee wave, go, he's a wee wave. There he is, yeah, that's a wee man. See you later, my man. Cheerio.